Okay, so how's everybody doing? I hope you're all doing okay. So in this particular episode, I want to uh, talk on something a little bit different. Uh, I want to talk about uh, a summer in my life as a young kid. I was 15 years old, and, and it has to do with, you know, maybe why I love building models my whole life. And... Uh, grew to love like the railroad or you know to model it anyway um you know it's funny how when we're young uh, i guess teenagers or well even younger you know their impressions that leave an indelible mark on our lives but i can remember one particular summer i was 15 years old it was in 1976 and i was a real troubled kid at that time Things were not uh, good at home, and uh, my dad sent me down the road packing, you know, uh, with my suitcase kind of scenario, and uh, I ended up eventually, I think, in a in a group home or something. And then I had a counselor who decided it would be a good thing that uh, I was sent to a ranch up in the interior of British Columbia, Canada. For the summer of 1976. I thought it would be a summer camp. Boy, was I wrong. That was a real shock to the system. Uh, even though I come from a lineage of farmers and Albertans and so on. I, mean, I was just a city kid, right? And I had no, no idea really, even though I had traveled as a young child back and forth to the farm in Alberta on the CN Supercontinental uh, with my other brothers. Uh, I knew nothing really about the farm other than the times we played on the farm as kids. But anyway, I was sent to this ghost town called Wallachine. It's still there. There's a small population of, oh, I don't know, 30 people or something or still there. And uh, I was put up in a bunkhouse right on the end of a, a Y an old Canadian Pacific Y. It was the engineer's bunkhouse, actually. And that was where I went with my bag, and they said, this is your uh, bunk house arrangement, and then you'll be up at 6 in the morning and out with the boys uh, working the ranch. Man, I was hooked up with these cowpuncher guys, you know, like uh, in their 20s, you know, late 20s, early 30s. Man, these guys were tough. And did I ever get a, uh, a real experience on the life of a rancher? It was part of the gang ranch or something. And it was the Sidwell boys. And uh, it was real, real intimidating. And these guys were hard to the core, too. Like, they never had, like, you know, organized cattle grates where the yearling horses would go into. They just squeezed them between a four-rail fence, took a chainsaw, cut a hole in it, and just rammed a red-hot branding iron through them. The, horse would panic and <clears throat> excuse me and leap up over and climb right over a four rail fence you know fall onto his back and break his leg and they'd shoot him out back of the it was just you know, like it was like uh kind of like a jippo logging <clears throat> operation right where the guy uses the full gravel truck to push the logs off the the you know the bunk into the chuck and he rolls right into the uh, Chuck himself and he's never found. It was just, a, you know, the Jippo operation. Anyway, so it was a real uh, experience for me. And then I had to, you know, move irrigation pipe and, and uh, you know, I hated that. You know, I, I would cheat, you know, I would uh, go and pull a few bales out of the stacks and sleep most of the day. And then eventually a few months later it, it, it caught up because they noticed how the alfalfa was growing in strips. You know, I wasn't really doing the job I was supposed to. I, I hated it. And the mosquitoes, oh. Anyway, I only lasted two months, but I want to say this, that in the evening times to get away from all of that, I would grab my fly rod. I was 15 years old. I had this little fiberglass fly rod you know, with a floating line. And uh, I would go down the... Uh, I believe it was the west end of the ranch uh, down. I'd hike down this, climb over the barbed wire fence and hike down the CP right away on the Thompson River. And I would go down this big embankment. I found this sort of pool, you know, that went off into this eddy. And I'd 
tie on a, a grasshopper and man the fishing was good I caught my first trophy trout there and I can remember this one moment where I this trout smashed the grasshopper just before it even hit the water and I was playing this you know hefty trout which I thought was a steelhead it might have been like a smaller steelhead at the time and meanwhile there was a CN train on the other side of the river rumbling by and the engineer was waving out the window and I had this trout and it was doing this series of runs and leaps uh, across the uh, the pool of water with the sun going down. I mean it was the most impactful memorable moment. This The railroad, the fly fishing, the ranch, the beautiful late July summer air and that just left such an impression on me that I think to this day, I, I, uh, it still drives my passion when I uh, build dioramas and model, you know, like if you look back at my earlier content, there's a few dioramas I did uh, many years ago of fly fishing. There's one with an eagle swooping down the Great Escape, missing the trout, and, the, and then another one with a guy fishing under the maple tree. These were the kinds of things that really impacted uh, what I do now, you know. Uh, I did research and found out that the Y, that that bunkhouse was part of a Y where the CP uh, uh, locomotives would turn around and they'd, you know, ship fruit because Wallachine was a immigration town uh, during the turn of the 20th century. It was a irrigation community which failed for many reasons. Uh, it was a myth that it failed because the men went off to World War One. I. I read the thesis. There were other factors involved as well, which is probably for another story. But um, yeah, what, what, a, what, what a time that was. Um, anyway, I just wanted to share that because I know for all of you that there are images and experiences that probably affect your life. Uh, if you care to share them uh, shortly in a comment, feel free to do it. You know, I, uh, I'd like to hear some of them. If you can condense them down to a paragraph, like what might be a moment in your life uh, that just inspired you to model or to uh, love train so much or just, you know, go to the efforts um, to uh, model a particular scene. Okay. So thanks for watching and thanks for hearing part of my story and I hope you have a great day.